Okay, so this is how we're going to restore a, uh, a backup from on the cloud server to the cloud server for disaster recovery purposes. Uh, so we'll start off with here, home. I'm on the cloud server now. So we start off with home. There are no jobs here, so we have to import the backup we need. And in this case, uh, I am going to choose, uh, not really one at random, but I'm going to pick one here. So we need to go to, in this case, we need to browse to the right server that we're going to back up. I'm going to, I'm going to restore this one. So I've selected my, my VM I want to restore. I'm going to import that. And we're doing this real time. So this is what it will really take to make this happen. Now we go to disks imported. Here's our backup. We select it. We're going to grab this backup here and we're going to do an instant VM recovery. That's the one we want. We're going to restore to a new location because the original location would put it back on the client site. So we're going to restore to a new location. And now we need to tell it where to go. Um, and I'm going to just put this as VMS test. And I'm going to choose our production environment. I'm going to choose 115. The rest of the settings can, can be fine. We can create uh, a, a f different folder for this if we want to. Uh, I'm not going to do that right now. The redirect write cache is what that does is uh, you can see where the, where the uh, changes, if we're running this thing as a backup, where the changes go uh, that, that happen while it's running as a mounted backup. So I'm going to leave that the default for now. Uh, in this case, we don't need to scan the machine for virus th threats. We're just going to continue. Uh, you don't have to put a reason here. I'm just going to hit next. In this case, I'm not going to connect to the VM network or power on the target VM after restoring. Uh, we don't have a network set up for this right now. We would need to do that ahead of time. So while that's running, I'm going to just make sure we're good here. Um, it should show up in this list eventually here, quickly, I would assume. So what happens is, is it's going to publish the VM, at which point we'll see VMS test show up in here. It's not quite there yet. I'm going to go back. Now it's registering the VM, so that's it's doing that with vCenter. Okay, so now at this point, it says it's been recovered. It's waiting for user migration. Let's go over here and check it. Here it is. It's not powered on. We can power it on. Uh, I'm not going to for purposes of this demo. Uh, the next step would be to, I can, we can close this. We can see it's running here in, under instant recovery. So right now it's running, it's mounted the backup as a virtual machine and it's running. The next step would be, to do a, 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 a full restore. So 
so that we can get this out of the recovery, instant recovery mode right away. So the, the, well, the, the right answer is to do a migrate to production and that would start a full restore on this mounted backup. Uh, in the meantime, though, it's able for use. It tracks all the changes, and then once it's fully restored to production, then uh, then then we would dismount this because we would have another virtual machine here that's going to be VMS, whatever we name it. So that's the process. You can see it took uh, about five minutes, start to finish, to get them up and running. The next step will take longer. The full restore to, to you know, to uh, migrate to production will take longer, but it's all happening in the background and it doesn't really matter uh, how long that takes. The only downside to doing it this way is that uh, when it, the migration to production is complete, it will power down this VM, this this instant recovery VM and incorporate the changes into the new VM, the fully restored VM. And during that time, they will be down. And we can't really predict what, when that is or how long it'll take. Uh, the, the sooner we start the full recovery, the less time it'll take at the far end because there won't be as many changes to incorporate. I've seen this take 15 minutes um, on a large VM. And so it, it varies, but this is, uh, this is, you know, what it's going to take to make this happen. And then of course, ahead of time, we're going to need to set up the network that the client will need. We should do that on the front end. Thanks for watching.